Hey guys, KSK here, back again with a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux 2019 on any PC running Windows or Mac OS using VirtualBox. This is one of the easiest ways of installing Kali Linux on any PC or laptop without removing the main operating system. Before going into the main video, I want to talk a little bit about a virtual box. A virtual box is an open source desktop application made by Oracle, which is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. This tool can be installed on any of these platforms as a part of application software. Normally, people install Kali Linux in the same disk along the side with Windows or Mac OS using a dual boot method. But this requires a lot of knowledge, and most of the people are worried about taking a risk of installing Kali Linux along the side with Windows as a part of dual boot. This is where the virtual box plays a major role. You install the virtual box as a part of application either on Windows or Mac OS, then it will create a virtual environment that lets you install a multiple guest operating systems. This works seamlessly. You have a host or main OS, say Windows, and it provides a platform for the virtual box to run, then the virtual box uses a virtualization technology that lets you run a multiple operating system. In this video, I will be using a Windows PC for demonstration purposes, and the process will be the same for both Windows users and Mac OS users. Anyway, let's get into the installation part. First, go to Google and search for VirtualBox, and then hit on the first link which will take you to the main website. By the time of recording this video, the current version of VirtualBox is 6.0. Now, simply click on this a big download button here and then choose your platform. So in this case, I will go with a Windows PC. If you're using a MacBook or iMac, choose a Mac OS edition. So once you click on it, it will immediately start downloading the file. Now head over to Kali.org, the official source of Kali Linux. Once you're inside this website, now hit on the download button from the top of the page. Now scroll all the way until you see an option called a Kali Linux or VBox. Here you can see there are two variants available, the one it says 64-bit, another one it says 32-bit. I recommend downloading a 64-bit version if your processor supports a 64-bit architecture. To know whether your Windows PC is running 64-bit or 32-bit OS, open File Explorer, then right-click on My Computer and choose the properties from here. It will show the CPU architecture. So in this case, it says 64-bit. Also, make sure that your system is having a support for virtualization technology. To check out that, open Task Manager under the Performance tab. Choose CPU option and here, and make sure that the virtualization is set to enabled. Now, moving back to the website. Now click on this link and scroll all the way and choose a VirtualBox Images tab here and choose the main file either 64-bit or 32-bit and click on it and once you click on it, it will immediately start downloading the main file. Now move these two downloaded files to the desktop for easier navigation. As you can see, this is the main file which ends with a .tar extension and is around a 4 gigs in size. Now go ahead, right click on the VirtualBox executable file and run it as an administrator and install it on your Windows PC. Once it's installed, you can see the new version of the VirtualBox has an updated GUI. Now go ahead and extract the a main Kali Linux or VBox image file using a WinRAR extractor. As you can see, now it has successfully extracted the file. Inside this extracted folder, you will find only two main files. The one which ends with .ovf extension and another one which ends with .vmdk extension. Anyway, now open the virtual box. On the top area, you may find an option called import. Just go ahead and hit on it. And now it will ask for a .ovf file. So simply hit this navigation button. And it will open the file explorer option, then navigate to the extracted folder and select the file which ends with .ovf extension. Then click on next and leave the settings as default and then hit on the import button.
Now the virtual box will automatically start importing the uh, main virtual machine disk image file and it will take around a three to four minutes. So sit back and relax and I will be back in a moment. Now, as you can see, it has successfully completed the importing process. Now, choose the Kali Linux virtual machine and right click on it and choose settings option. Here, I will adjust some hardware resources. In this case, I will accommodate a 3 gigs of RAM for Kali Linux. Then under the processor tab, I will use a two cores since my PC has a maximum of four cores. If your processor supports a multiple cores, I recommend increasing the core value will directly improve the smooth performance. Then select the USB option and make sure untick USB controller option from here. Once it's done, now apply the changes. Now then click on the start button. Now the virtual box will automatically start booting into the Akali Linux. You need to know a few things here. If you click inside the a virtual machine, the mouse cursor control will only work within the Kali Linux. If you want to control the host OS, which in case a Windows, then pressing the right control key on your keyboard will release the mouse cursor control back to the Windows PC. Anyway, the initial booting process will roughly take around a minute to five minutes. Once it's done, you will see a login page. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill the whole screen using the full screen mode and the virtual box will automatically scale up the entire system resolution without the need of any drivers. Now by default the username will be a root and the password is a TOOR, the reverse form of root. Simply type here to log in into the Kali Linux. Now that's it, you have successfully installed Kali Linux on your PC. Uh, as you can see, everything works fine. And this is the, one of the easiest ways that most of the corporate companies use for testing different operating systems with the help of the virtual box. You can almost install Ubuntu, Color Linux, or Windows 7, Windows 8.1, Mac OS, or any kind of an operating systems without worrying anything about the hardware resources. If you want to turn off the virtual machine, it's very simple. Just go ahead and power off normally as you do. Also, just in case, if you want to remove this Kali Linux virtual machine, open VirtualBox, right click on the Kali Linux virtual machine and choose to remove option and make sure to select delete all files. That's it guys, that's pretty much about it. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down there and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and consider clicking on bell button to get notified. Thanks for watching, this is KSK Ryo and I will see you in my next video. Peace.